Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be sharing my August favorites and fails, everything that I loved throughout the month, as well as a few products that did not work for me too, just kind of some updates, and then a few products that I've, I guess I've really used all summer long, but I just haven't really talked about in previous videos. August flew by so quickly, I don't even know what went on during the month of August. I cannot believe the end of summer is almost here. Like pumpkin spice is here, fall decorations, and as much as I love fall, I really do. Like I love the next four months. I'm not ready to say goodbye to summer yet. I hope that you have had a really good summer and that you're looking forward to moving into fall, if it is fall where you live. I just feel like it is kind of a nice time of the year. So anyway, let's jump into it and I'll share everything that I loved. A lot of these products I've enjoyed during the summer, like it's been so hot during the month of August but I do feel like they're going to be really good transitional products as we move into the fall season too. So what should we start with? I've, they're like all spread out in front of me. Okay, let's start with this product. It is the Fenty Beauty Eavesdrop Blurring Skin Tint. I'm so glad I repurchased this product. It's kind of been on my wish list for a little while. I had it a few years ago when it first launched and I ended up decluttering it maybe a little while later because it wasn't a bad product, but it just wasn't what I was reaching for. I've always been a fan of full coverage foundations. And over the years, I feel like the coverage level that I require out of my complexion products has gone down little by little. I'm definitely still not like a light coverage fan. I do like more of a medium coverage product. So the reason I wanted to pick this one up is because I've heard that first of all, it has a little more coverage than other skin tints out there and that it's really good for oily skin. And like I said, it had been a few years since I tried it. So I decided to grab it. I did get a good deal because Ulta was having a promotion where you could get like 10 times the points. So this was $35. So I got 350 points for it, which doesn't save you money initially. But later on, when you redeem your points, those do add up. Anyway, I got the shade three. It's pretty much a perfect spot on shade match. It's maybe slightly too warm, but I'll just mix in a little bit of a color corrector and it works really well for me. I love the texture of this. I actually just apply it with my fingers. It is super quick and easy to use. It's very smooth on the skin. And I like this because it does cover redness and it gives me like the perfect amount of coverage but it doesn't like blend away to nothing. It's also really great for oily skin because it does have more of a matte finish and I find that it's longer lasting on my oily skin or like my combo skin during the hot summer days than other products that are kind of similar. So I definitely prefer this to any other like skin tint or tinted moisturizer or like lighter product that I've tried because the coverage is a little bit better. It stays in place longer. It looks so, so nice on the skin. So I've been a big fan of this. I'm really glad I repurchased it. And I think it will be perfect as we head into the fall season on days where I don't want like a full on foundation. By the way, if you're looking for a good color corrector, the e.l.f. Camo color correctors are really nice. I've been using the blue one. Sometimes I'll use the LA Girl Blue Mix in Pigment. You get a lot of product for the price. So that's really nice to have just on hand. They have different shades, different colors but I was traveling, we were traveling in August, we went to visit Brady's side of the family and we were flying. So I was just trying to include like minimal products in my makeup bag. I did a video, if you want to see what I brought with me, I'll link it below. And I decided to bring this one because it's very lightweight, it's a lot smaller, but the texture of this product is different than the LA Girl product. This one has like a creaminess to it. So if you mix it in with a base product, I feel like it adds that moisturizing factor, which is kind of nice because a lot of the complexion products I use are more on the matte side. So it's nice to just add like a touch of like a, a, a creaminess to the foundation that might not already be there. And this is really small and compact too. I've actually been wearing a lot of pink makeup in August. I feel like the Barbie marketing really got to me and we were seeing Barbie makeup collections left and right. That was probably more so in like June and July, but I love pink makeup. And instead of like running out and buying a bunch of pink makeup, I just kind of pulled out what I already had. Although this is newer to me. I picked this up before I saw a lot of that pink marketing and I feel like it was perfect timing because I've used it so much. It's the Lawless Forget the Filler Lip Plumping line smoothing gloss, and this one is in Juicy Watermelon. So I'm wearing this today. I have it over kind of like a light to medium pink lip liner. Sometimes I'll pair it with like a really hot pink lip liner. Sometimes I'll wear it on its own and it looks good all three ways. This is a really gorgeous formula. I tried it for the first time a few months ago. I got like the cherry vanilla shade, which I've been wearing a lot this summer too, but I love this pink one. If you're really into pink makeup right now, like me, I think you'll love this too. It smells like watermelon. It is very thick, but really luxurious feeling, and it gives your lips an incredibly smooth, shiny, glossy finish. I'm already planning on picking up another shade during the upcoming Sephora VIB sale, which I think happens in November. It's a little bit of an expensive gloss, but this really is, like the quality is 
definitely there. I have not found a good drugstore alternative to this formula. So if you have any recommendations, please let me know. There's just something about this. It's very thick in a good way, very smooth. Like it really does fill in all of the fine lines. So I'm a big fan of that and the color is perfect. I wanted to share an update on the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude palette. So I have not used this all month. It just launched like middle of August, like mid to end of August. I can't remember the exact date. I do know that I've used it five times at this point. I have a couple of videos on my channel using it. If you wanna see some different looks I've created, I'll link them below. I am wearing it today. So today I have this color blended into the crease and then up as a transition. This one in the crease, just like a touch of that. And then this shade all over the lid and that's it. This is my favorite shade in the palette, the shade Mia. It also is the only shade that I feel like I experience a lot of fallout with. Some of the other wet looking shadows like this one and this one, like sometimes I'll get a little fallout, but this one I do typically get quite a bit of fallout. So I just typically do my eyes first when I'm using this palette because I always end up reaching into this shade, but I've enjoyed this so much, even more than I initially thought I would. When I initially saw the photos, I knew that I would get a lot of use out of it because I do tend to wear some a little more subtle these days on the eyes and I really do love like a good cool toned eyeshadow but the issue with a lot of cool toned palettes is they tend to be like very gray very silvery and those shades are pretty but I feel like these shades are more flattering on my skin tone this has like the perfect touch of rosiness and some of the shades even look a little bit like purpley on my skin tone especially when I mix in that darker brown so it's been really fun to play with because I think I'm actually able to get more looks out of this than I initially thought I would. There are a lot of gorgeous textures in here. The matte shadows are perfect. Like they blend out so easily. They look incredibly smooth on the eyes, which is really nice for everyday wear because I can create a look like I have on today in two minutes, or I can do something a little more intense again, fairly quickly. I know it's not a groundbreaking color story. So if you have palettes in your collection that are kind of similar, I'm not saying like run out and splurge on this because it is an expensive palette. It's $69. The ColourPop Going Coconuts palette and the That's Tote palette come pretty close to this one. And I know a lot of you already own those two. So if you're just specifically looking to create like a similar look, then that then those are a great option, especially if you already have them. The formulas are not the same. I do think this formula is very very beautiful and no complaints about the actual formula except for a little bit of fallout with the shade Mia. But this is the first Natasha Denona palette where I could actually see myself hitting pan on different shadows because I think I'll be reaching for it all year long. Like these are such gorgeous shadows no matter what time of the year it is no matter what type of look I'm going for, I feel like it will pair really well with other Natasha Denona palettes I have. I've only been using this palette on its own just to kind of fully test it out, but I cannot wait to pair it with the Natasha Denona Retro palette. I think that will be the perfect combo and this will just complement that palette so perfectly. So I'm really happy about this palette. I do think it's getting a ton of hype on social media, but it also sold out as Sephora. So I feel like it's not necessarily just YouTubers and TikTokers and people on Instagram. I think a lot of people in, in real life, just like everyday consumers are interested in a palette like this that kind of takes cooler toned neutrals and elevates them a little bit. So I've been enjoying it a lot. I think it is a gorgeous palette, definitely worth the money, but you'll probably be able to get it on sale during Black Friday, so it might be worth waiting too. Okay, let me share a product that did not work for me. This is a moisturizer from the brand Verse. I actually really like the brand Verse. They make a lot of my favorite products, including another moisturizer. I, what is the name? I have, I have such a hard time remembering skincare names for some reason these days. I feel like they're so long, but it comes in like a green and white tube. It's a really nice lightweight gel cream moisturizer that I love during the morning time. So I would recommend that over this one. I'll link it below, but this one is the Weekend Glow Daily Brightening Moisturizer. This sounded so, so good for the summertime, but it really has a lot of cons. I don't recommend picking this one up. First of all, you have to really shake this product up because it's almost like they mixed a gel cream moisturizer with a vitamin C serum. So if you don't really shake it up and mix it up, it comes out like, 
it it doesn't come out in a nice way. Like it's a little bit chunky, but then there's also like a serum that comes out as well. It's just kind of a mess. So if you do mix it up, it's a lot better, but it looks so greasy on the skin. It doesn't just give your skin like a beautiful, healthy glow. It gives you like a full on greasy look. Like you just applied a super shiny sunscreen. This does have a vitamin C in it. It also has cloudberry oil, but this actually stings my skin a little bit too. And my skin is more on the sensitive side, but when I apply it, not only does my skin look really greasy, it also stings and this product smells really bad. I can't even explain it. It's like, it's almost like a sharp scent. Like you can definitely smell the vitamin C. It smells like some vitamin C serums, but on top of that, there's like a really unpleasant earthy scent mixed in too. And that scent will linger all day long. The final con for me is that this product pills so badly, not even when I mix it with other products. Like if I, if I just wash my face and apply this product and nothing else, it will still pill throughout the day. So if I do end up going in with sunscreen on top and then makeup on top, like it's just a mess. So I really don't recommend picking this product up. I'm surprised by this because I've had a really good experience with Versed overall, but this product was a definite fail for me. I wanted to share a fragrance that I've really been loving. So this brand is available at Target. I think they launched at Target last year, or maybe it was earlier in 2023. It's called Finery. And basically they create fragrances that are kind of inspired by higher end products. I don't know if they actually claim that on their website. That's just what I've heard about the brand on TikTok. Oh no, it actually says on Target.com that they take inspiration from legendary fragrances that have shaped the history of perfume to craft unique scent experiences and just make them accessible to more people. They say fine fragrance is a luxury and a pleasure that everyone should have access to. So basically they kind of create like dupe like scents for a more affordable price point. So at Target, you can get the actual perfume, like a two ounce bottle for $27.99, or you can get a body mist fragrance spray for $12.99. I kind of want to see what the other fragrances are kind of inspired by just to see what else is out there. But I have this one. This one is called Magnetic Candy. It smells so good. It's very sweet, but it's also a little bit more unique compared to other sweet fragrances I have. It's like a very sickly sweet fragrance. I feel like over the years I've kind of moved away from like sickly sweet scents. I do love fragrances that are very sweet or very floral. Typically I kind of reach for like more floral fragrances these days or even a little bit fruity. This one just smells so good. You know what? I can actually smell a lot of the floral now that I'm thinking about it. They say it smells like sugared violet, pink pomelo, and cotton candy. And the scent experience is a nostalgic escape into a neon candy fantasy. That fragrance descriptions are always so intense. When I was looking up to see what this was a dupe for, some websites said Prada Candy and then some websites said by Rado Sundays. I haven't smelled either one of those fragrances. I, I might have had a sample of like Prada Candy years ago or maybe like sprayed it on a, in a Sephora store but I can't remember well enough if this would be an actual dupe for that. If you've tried that one from Byredo or Prada Candy and you've tried this one, please let me know if you think they're similar. I mean, either way, I just think it is a really nice fragrance. I feel like it's been so perfect for the summer because it's just kind of fun, playful, super sweet. You can definitely smell like the cotton candy and the floral notes. And I just think it's a fun option and I don't have anything quite like it. I think it's really unique. So this is a fun one. If you've tried any other fragrances from Finery, please let me know if you have another recommendation, but I think it's nice. You can get really great fragrances and more affordable price points these days. And I'm impressed by this one. Like I said, we did visit my husband's side of the family and they live in Iowa and it was so hot in Iowa. We went to the Iowa State Fair. We hadn't been there in years. We did like a couple of different things outside and I was not prepared for the weather. It was like 90 degrees and it just doesn't get that hot where we live in the Northeast. So I actually was kind of prepared because I did bring some really long lasting makeup products, including the Urban Decay All Nighter. I'm so glad I brought this because my makeup did not move. I always forget how good this product is until summer rolls around. I did wear this in July to an outdoor wedding. And again, my makeup was just locked into place. So I've been using it a little more regularly this summer, especially during the month of August when we were out of town. And then even once I got home, because it really does extend the wear of my makeup. It just locks everything into place so well. And during the summertime, I do tend to reach for like a lot of powder. So I feel like when I spray this on my face, it just melts everything together in more of a natural way and my skin looks 
actually skin like despite the fact that I might have a lot of powder on to keep it from getting too oily so this is something I've had for years kind of like a rediscovered favorite it's an old favorite but it still works so well and it really has stood the test of time for me okay I've actually been using this product like all summer and I I don't have I mentioned this I feel like I've mentioned it in a few videos where I was actually doing my makeup on camera but the Too Faced Killer Liner in the shade black is perfect for lining for tight lining. I've never really been big into tight lining, but I feel like these days when I do my makeup, like sometimes there's kind of a gap. And if I apply liquid liner and then I apply mascara, you can still see like a few areas where it doesn't look filled in. And if I'm not wearing false lashes, like I have false lashes on today, I feel like taking this product and just tight lining does make my lashes look a little thicker and more voluminous. So I'm definitely on board with the tight lining technique at this point, but the issue is a lot of eyeliners transfer. I never wear black liner on my waterline anymore. I did back in the day, especially like way back in the day, like in my junior high days, I just took black eyeliner and just lined my whole eye, filled in my waterline. Like I wore so much eyeliner that I remember at one point my mom was like, you have to either pick like the top or the bottom, but like what you're wearing right now is just too much. I think that lasted like for a whole day or two and then I went back to like the full on black liner. Did you guys have a black eyeliner phase as well? I feel like teens these days are not going through that phase in the same way. But anyway, if you're looking for a long lasting black liner, this is the one. I talk about the killer liners a good amount on my channel, but I do feel like one of the most asked questions I get is like, what is your favorite pencil liner that doesn't transfer? And this one actually stays in place. And the way I know it stays in place is because I'll usually wear like a lighter liner on my waterline. And when I do that, like you, can, you can't see that the black liner is transferring onto the lighter liner. Anyway, definitely a staple all year long. But just something I wanted to mention because I feel like I use it so much and I just don't talk about it as much on my channel. Okay, I did pick up this makeup bag. This is really, really cute. It's from the brand, I think it's pronounced Avini. I actually got this from Amazon. I picked it up because I was using it specifically in short form content. I had this video idea in mind that I was going to do. And then honestly, I just, I ended up using it as an actual makeup bag. So when we went out of town, I brought this with me and it's the perfect size because it's not, oversized, but you can fit everything in here really well. I like that it's clear on both sides so you can see what you're looking for. I mean, whenever I'm doing my makeup, I just actually unzip it and like set it there. But I'm someone who tends to be like a chronic overpacker when it comes to my makeup. And I've always had like very large makeup bags where I just throw everything in. So when I packed my makeup bag this time around, I was just a little bit more intentional about my choices. Whatever could fit in here is what I brought with me. And that worked out really well. We're actually getting ready to go out of town again. We're going to be gone a little longer. So I'm like, can I fit everything I need in here? But I can because every time I travel, I never end up using half the makeup I bring with me. So I, I'm, I think this is just a cute option, but it's also very practical. I like that it's a little more sturdy. It's kind of structured, so it keeps its shape. It's small, compact. It's great to have.